Hey guys, Dave here for the Reptile Channel, Herpers TV. You know, this segment of the Reptile Channel is really geared at a younger audience, but with this episode, it doesn't matter what your age. If you're in the market for your first crested gecko, then this is the video to watch. So recently, I went and visited with Ryan Dalen, and he shows us everything that we need to know when considering what to do when you're going out to buy your first crested gecko. How to house them, what to look for in morphs, how to feed them, this is the episode to watch if you're in the market for your very first crested gecko. So let's go see what Ryan has to say here on Rainbow Mealworms Presents the Reptile Channel Kids. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Dolan. I am the owner of Ryan's Reptile Outpost. So today we're gonna to show you what to look for when you're looking to buy a crested gecko. Now crested geckos, or uh, Corlophus ciliatus, as their scientific name is, they are a very easy first animal. They don't require any he extra heating. As long as your house stays between 65 at night and 75 during the day, they're gonna be happy. They're nocturnal animals, so that means that they are most active at night. So any UVB isn't necessary, although they will benefit from having it on there. Also, their diet is fairly simple. What they like, they do like their occasional bugs, such, like, such as insects and crickets, dubia roaches. As long as they have some calcium powder on them occasionally, that's perfect. But what my geckos mostly prefer is Pangea, a mixed food, a dry powder that you add to water. It's kind of like a little fruit smoothie for them. So when you're picking out your first crested gecko, one of the first things that I want to look for is one that's a good starting size. You don't want to buy one that's too small because then the chances of survival are not as high as those that are as an established adult or an established juvenile. So whenever I look for a crested gecko that I'm going to purchase, I want to get one that is about this big. Now this one here, this one hatched out in November and it's probably about four to five grams. So with that, he's been eating for a couple months now, actually since November, so nine months. So we know that he's healthy. He's got a little bit of a chubby belly to him. So that shows that he is eating. When you see some of the ribs, it's not ideal, but that could also be a sign of dehydration. So with this guy, you see too, when you're holding him, he's pretty curious. He's active. He's not, doesn't have a weird gait or a weird walk to him. You can see his eyes, they're going to be bulgy because they don't have any eyelash or any uh, eyelids to them, but you don't want them to be too far out because that could be a sign of inbreeding. Also, he's very proportional. Uh, you'll notice some crested geckos don't have their tail, and that's fine. Crested geckos, they do drop their tails occasionally because if they feel threatened by a predator, or let's say if it's caught in a door of the enclosure, or sometimes they just get spooked and they'll drop it. Unfortunately, it doesn't grow back, but this doesn't inhibit anything from them having a happy gecko life. All right, so now we're gonna talk over a little bit about the different morphs you can find. So with them, they have a lot of different patterning. They're not like ball pythons where they have a specific genetic uh, trait to it. With these, it's kind of what you see is what you get as far as breeding is concerned. So like with this one here that I'm holding, you can see it has some pinstriping down the side, so this one is aptly named pinstripe, but also has some down the sides as well. So this one would be a quad pinstripe. So each morph or different variation will have a different price tag to it. Sometimes if it's more, actually if it is more defined, it will be a little more expensive. But there are some crested geckos which look like this guy here. You'll notice that he does have some spots on him, some very nice dark black spots, and that is called Dalmatian appropriately. Nothing too defined about him other than the Dalmatian spots. So this guy would potentially be a little less expensive. So if you're looking for a first crested gecko, this might be a good, inexpensive option to start with. This is one of my personal favorites. This is a bicolor crested gecko, a bicolor orange. Orange is my favorite color, so naturally this guy stuck out to me. Unfortunately, it's not one of those that are highly sought after because there's not much patterning or not much going on as far as the pattern is concerned. Still though, I find them pretty amazing. The next part I want to talk about is the enclosure for crested geckos. Now, crested geckos, they are an arboreal species, so they do need a taller enclosure, preferably a taller enclosure, because they do like to climb. What I recommend and what most breeders will recommend first is to have a front opening cage like this one here. The dimensions for this one are 12 by 12 by 18, and Zilla also came out with a new front opening cage recently as well. So yeah, you got quite a few options to choose from. 
Now, the reason why you want one like this is because it's easy to access them. You're not going in from the top, which can be intrusive to some reptiles. Generally, if something comes at them from the top, it's a predator. So if they see your hand coming down on them, they're gonna get, or they might get scared. One thing, another thing nice about this is that it does have ventilation from the top and on the front here. It does allow adequate usage of substrate in the bottom here, so it's easy to see what's going on in your tank. Uh, otherwise, another option that isn't the most popular opinion is to use an, a Tenga in an aquarium. You could put them on the side and there are different kits you can get to make it a front opening cage. However, what I found works out pretty well is to take a 10 gallon screen lid and put a piece of acrylic on the top. That way it keeps the humidity in. Now the reason why you want to keep the humidity in is it is essential for crested geckos to shed properly. They are a tropical species, so they do need that constant humidity. So once or twice a day of misting is essential. And if you have a screen lid without anything on top of it, you do run the risk of them getting too dry. When they get too dry, you have issues with shedding. And when they have issues shedding, then their whole body starts to suffer as well. They can lose their appetite. They can get bacteria infection underneath the skin that they're trying to shed. A lot of bad stuff can happen. Another option that you can do as well is something like a plastic enclosure, a plastic sterilite tub with ventilation on the side. Another good reason to have this is it does, you can promote your own ventilation in there. You do have to make the holes yourself, but it does actually keep the substrate nice and moist. So you can see that it is still, still pretty damp in there. Again, not ideal, you don't get to see them as well, but it does keep all the conditions right for them. Now we're gonna show you another reason why crested geckos are so popular. It's because the food to make for them is very, very simple and easy to make. And also, you not have to feed as many live. So if you are worried about having insects in your house, or too many insects in your house, or worried about like how some animals need to eat mice or other creatures like that, you don't have to worry as much with crested geckos. You just have to worry about crickets, pretty much it other than this here. So what this is, this is what all my geckos eat. It's a Pangea gecko diet. So what it is, it's a powder mix that you add one scoop of powder to two scoops of water. And that makes a little fruit smoothie. All you do is you add the powder. So we have the one scoop and then two scoops of water. You mix it together and then you have a little gecko smoothie. The next step after you make it, you have to put it in a dish for them to eat. So for all of my geckos, I have between little ball cap caps or two ounce cups. With this one we have here, we have a 1.5 ounce container. And you're all set. What makes it really easy to clean the cage is to have a device like this. It's called a reptile ledge. And what it does is it sticks to the side of the glass since geckos like to climb. So it's not on the floor and holds the dish perfectly. That's not to say that the gecko won't eat it if it's on the base or on the floor area. Just this is something that they prefer. All right, so some key things to look for when you're buying your first reptile. Again, you wanna look for the size, you wanna look for the health, you wanna look it over. You also wanna make sure that you buy it from a breeder. The reason why you wanna do that versus a corporate owned pet store is because you know the person that's bred these reptiles. You know the person that's put care into them, you know their history. They most of the time will have the parents as well of the gecko you're buying. So that's really nice. You get a more personalized relationship with them and you're helping most of the time support a local business. Easy way to find these breeders is to go online and look up your local reptile expos. They happen more than you'd think. Uh, there are a few national reptile expos, which are always a lot of fun, good conventions to learn about, but there are some smaller, more local, and that way you get to meet these local businesses, local uh, breeders as well. Uh, it's always good to start a relationship with them and that way you can really get the, the best gecko for you. And these, these owners, they're gonna help you too. They wanna make sure that their animals succeed and most of the time they'll uh, stick around with you as well and if you have any questions you can go back to them and they'll, they'll help you as much as they can. So by doing your research, following these steps, uh, finding your local breeders, going to reptile shows, even joining a local herpetological society, you're going to be on your way to successfully owning and having a happy gecko. They live for about 15 years and I've had all of mine live to that expectancy.